Hello friends, it's Gail Cosmic, professional IKEA hacker or peak furnishings, whichever you prefer. Here today for my online school, handy design, modern ideas, being handy for the 21st century. I will do a review of IKEA's new and handsome door, Half Storp. This is it. Pay attention to this sound, we'll get back to it a little later and I'll explain to you why. Mounted on a 40 inch box, 15 inches wide. I paired this half store with a Gdinga door because I think they're related. I think they're both made in the same place. That's my wild guess. Both are lacquered. Lacquered meaning they're made out of MDF and they're sprayed with lacquer, which means they're seamless. Seamless lacquer doors, this is it. Both share identical physical characteristics, 5 8 thick, probably on the IKEA's thinner door side. However, don't fret, all they have to do is act this way. A nice soft close mechanism, thanks to IKEA's new and improved hinge. This one, Bloom for the win again. The soft close is now integrated, no, no longer the chunky piston getting in the way, clipping it on. I like it. I am a big fan of slab door. Design talk. I'm a big fan of slab doors because slab doors are plain, boring, and unassuming. And actually that is your greatest advantage because now it's you that will give personality to these doors. It's you that will bring out what's best out of them. It's you that will showcase your creativity. How are you going to do that? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that. You know, we'll do a low and high first right the low you're already there it's an amazing 14 and 15 dollars there's a dollar difference between these two so that's your low you're already there you cannot buy a better quality lacquer doors on the market that come that are paired up to an incredible array of different sizes boxes with lots of flexibility as to how and where you can install them. Don't forget, this is a shallow section box, right? The shallow section box, you can go sky high. So these doors are perfect, for example, for lofts or very tall spaces. IKEA doesn't show you really how to do it in their sort of residential offering, but I've seen in their commercial offering. I've seen pictures of these shallow section boxes stacked so they offer more height. So that's something you can do. I will be offering a course in how to get your section sky high. So that will come on the teachable platform a little later but that's where I want to highlight that these doors you can now create walls with them. So if you are a minimalist, you can build a wall and your focus is on the geometry. You get the push to open little gadget that's mounted on the inside so your doors appear flawless. You just frame them and you can create voids. That's my favorite kind of design trick with these doors. A wall and a void and then something there for visual interest. Play with the geometry of the door, set up a nice rhythm. Seize that minimalist aesthetic. I prefer the white, the Vedinge, simply because it's, it's, it's simpler, it's colder, it's unemotional. Um, I guess I want to say that's a little bit me. When people ask me, Kara, why do you always wear black? I say, oh, that's because I put color in other people's lives. All right, so I'm kind of black, white kind of guy. But now with these, 
You get a color choice. This grayish, beige, I want to say. Color is challenging. I would suggest getting a door, maybe a little larger, and bringing it into your space to evaluate its true potential. It's hard to make a decision just by browsing and looking at something. Um, you want to bring it in, you want to put it in the space, leave it for a little bit, go about your day, maybe leave it there for a week, just so you get to live with it and you get to kind of experience. Huh? And then you will say after a week, I like it, or maybe it's not for me. So how to make the color decision? Do, is this color right for me? Bring it in and leave it in your space and see how you respond. You want to get that sort of gut reaction to it. By the end of the week of living with these half stored doors, you will know whether you like them or not. That's the sort of the design potential of these doors, how to discover it. You first want to a little bit spend a lot of time with them, get, get to know them, you know, pair them up, bring things to it, set it up, see what the vibe you get. Are you digging it? Are you not digging it? White works with essentially everything. Slab doors work with anything, but now we have the color option that you have to consider. So that would be my advice. Get a door, put it in your space, live with it for a little bit, see how you like that color. To me, this is a little warm. So you definitely have to cool it off, play it cool, I want to say. That can be achieved either by a color or just your setups. I mounted this box on the rail up there, but imagine you can take this rail lower. I've taken the Vidinga door. I haven't worked with half stove just yet, but I've taken Vidinga doors and I made them into kitchens, into storage, into media, low credenzas all sorts of options. That's your flexibility. That's your greatest advantage, positioning of the box. You can have it anywhere you'd like. I like it. It's a great value. Quality of the finish. It's different from the dinghy. I won't be testing this finish the way I tested the Vadinge. I think it's unfair. I will take a wild guess that the difference in the finish quality in the surface, because there is a difference, the, the dengue doors feel very smooth and creamy. And as I was a finisher in my past life, I want to say that this is how I like my lacquered doors, like this, the surface quality, it's kind of smooth, creamy. This one has a little bit more of a coarse texture. So that's why it makes the different sound. That's why I mentioned in the beginning. Um, so I bet that this was done to resolve the issues with the Vedenge. That's okay. You know, they're, they're always, I think IKEA is always improving, always aiming to provide you with a better quality than the past, you know, addition or their past experience or the past product that they have created. So having said that I like these doors and I, and I will use them in my projects, upcoming projects, I haven't done anything yet. It's so new. Nobody approached me and said, hey, I care, I've got half store doors and I want to use them. What are the considerations, design considerations? What's important? I say the most important thing to think about is that the dengue will always be with us. I'm certain of that. Now, will half store be with us indefinitely? Imagine creating your perfect kitchen, creating your perfect, perfect built-in, your perfect design, and finding out after two or three or four or five years or so that these doors get discontinued and you can't replace them anymore. Right, so that replaceability that I love about Ikea and that affordability now is gone. If you think this can't happen, it has happened in the past. 
IKEA uh, launched a high gloss bluish greenish door several years back. I have a review of that door. There was it was very popular. Um, you know, people were pining, people were demanding. We want another high gloss color. IKEA gave it to them and then took it away. So. I want to say those people who ended up with that high gloss bluish greenish, I can't recall the name of it right now, you know, they're out of luck. So consider that, that if you will get these doors one day, you may find them, find yourself unable to replace them. This is important. If you think it will always exist, I'm pretty sure about this. Half star will exist. How long? I don't know. What's the second thing to think about is that the, because these two are of different quality, surface quality finish, if you pair them up this way, side by side, and if you have somebody in your life that does this, and they'll say, look, these two doors are of different quality, it may bother you, so what I do, what I would do, I would separate them. Remember, you can mount this box, this rail anywhere, you know, you can split them, Give some distance, give some breathing room between these two. Let them play each other. Nice, slab, clean, unassuming, lacquered doors, but give them space. So no one can say, oh, these are different. No one will be like, oh. It's a psychology of design. A lot of decisions that I make in my own creations are based on how humans behave, what our routines are. I called, yeah, I called it the psychology of design. And I think the more you can, the more inside you have, the more you can kind of play with it, the more you'll be able to improve your own space or you will be able to off, offer a greater, you know, offering to your clients, for example, okay? I like these doors, half store. The surface quality is different from the dengue, color grayish, beige-ish. Work with it, bring it into your space, evaluate it, will this work? You can always go with the more neutral, the dengue. This is a color statement. Quality-wise, I bet they improved over the dengue. That's all you need to know. And the amazing price point is what I like. As I said, I cannot even begin to think to make a door like this for $15. That's your advantage. Bring it into your home. Be creative with it. That's what I teach. That's what I preach. Handy design, modern ideas. Being handy for the 21st century. Take advantage of everything that's being offered to us. That is what's being handy in the 21st century. That is my argument for it. See you on the other side. Ciao.